This story is something that I think about from time to time and it creeps me out. So I am writing this to get it off my chest. Let's begin. Two, almost three years ago, I was 17 years old. At this point, I was accustomed to being in horrible situations as all I had was my mother and she could not hold down a job for long because she had her own issues to tackle. And so as I grew up, we stayed in and out of roommates' houses. We never really had our own place to stay except twice, but that didn't last long either. And we would be forced into a new environment with a snap of a finger. So when I was 17, we were led into a situation where we were going to be homeless again. And I was used to it at this point as I had slept in the street more than I like. The day comes when we have to leave our roommate's house and my mom is able to stay at her boyfriend's trailer. I had nowhere to go and I had no friends at this point. I halted my friendships because they were bad for my health and mental state and overall were toxic. My mom offered me to go with her but I didn't want to as I felt like getting between. My mom and her boyfriend was kind of weird. Plus, I'm used to the street, and I didn't think it was as bad as it was at the time. So here we are. I get dropped at a McDonald's, and I eat some burgers before I go off into the streets once more. Eventually, the sun fled and darkness was all that remained, and so I looked for a place to sleep for the night. I went into many places that night trying to sleep, but none of them were working because it was either too hot or the lights were too bright or the mosquitoes were biting me. That's when I remembered a house that I used to go into to chill in. This house was under construction and nearly finished, so the doors all shut and the windows were all settled, so there were no mosquitoes. I go through the back like always and I make my way upstairs. Eventually, I settled in the bathroom because there was less debris on the floor. So I lay there and I try to sleep. Eventually, I hear some sounds downstairs, but I didn't think anything of it. I figured it was the door that I came through swinging open and closed or something. Eventually, after laying there for maybe an hour, I open up my phone and I look at old photos of my life thinking about how messed up it was that I got to this point and how I lost everything. The noises were still happening this entire time, but I paid no mind to it. Eventually, for whatever reason, I get up and I go to sit down on the back porch because I just couldn't sleep. I make my way downstairs and out the back door to the porch. I am messing around on my phone for maybe five minutes when it happens. I see movement to my left from the back door I just exited from. I glance over and time itself freezes. At first I think that it's an illusion but I was in fact wrong. I see a man shrouded in darkness peering past the wall inside to gaze at me. His lower half of his figure was behind the wall entirely and I could not see anything but his upper body. The rest of his body was leaning to the left, peeking behind this wall. Almost like the man was trying not to let me see his full body, as it would make his presence known. The man was a pure black silhouette, and I could not make out any features. After noticing him, I just sat there and stared at him for what seemed like forever, but I was probably a minute or two. I expected him to come outside and talk to me because... I normally talk to a lot of homeless people and I thought the man was just homeless. He didn't come outside though, he had not moved at all actually. He was as still as a statue and quiet as a mouse. Maybe if I had not noticed him he would have stared at me the entire time. Eventually, after staring at him, I got up and got my bicycle and made my way out of the property. As I am walking out of the backyard, I peer into the window that is next to the door I saw the man in. The moonlight revealed the man was still there, only now he was watching me walk out of the property. I could tell because the moonlight revealed the top of the man's head, and I saw his left eye gazing at me. He was a white male who was very tall and had a jacket of some kind on. 
I could not make out many details because he was still cloaked in darkness. After seeing this, I'd just move a little faster out of there. I got to the front of the house on the street and I looked inside to see if I could see him again. I could not. I got on my bicycle and waved goodbye to the house because I figured the man was still watching me. Then I rode away. For the rest of the night, I could not sleep. I tried two different spots, but both were no luck. I know I didn't have a crazy chase or fight to the death or anything, but this was real life and it's not the same as the movies or books. I don't know what the man was doing in there, I assume he was trying to sleep like I was, but the way he was staring at me was very unnerving. It makes me wonder how long the man was in the house for and what would have happened if I actually fell asleep in the house. Would he have stared at me while I was asleep, completely blinded to his presence? Or did he have other intentions? I will never know, but now I don't go into houses like that anymore at all after this experience. So to the man shrouded in darkness, so let's not meet again. Hello everyone, I am very new to posting on here so please bear with me. I wanted to share my story that has occurred over the past 5 years. This story is about me, currently 20 years old, and my stalker ex, who is currently 23. Part 1, The Start of Our Relationship, 2019 to 2021. Five years ago, I met my ex, I'll call him Alex, for my own safety. In early to mid-2019, I came across Alex's profile on Instagram and recognized him as a student who attended the same high school as me. I always thought he was attractive, so I followed him on Instagram, and to my surprise, he actually responded to one of my stories. We started messaging on Instagram back and forth and then the both of us quickly found out that we liked each other. We started calling each other and sleeping on the phone. One night, while I had fallen asleep on the phone with Alex, I heard his voice coming from the phone whispering something like, I would R-word you and things along that manner. I thought I was hearing things so brushed it off and thought I was just dreaming. Eventually, me and him started dating and going on dates. Everything went pretty well except for the fact that when he would kiss me, he would bite me extremely hard, to the point it would make me bleed. I told him multiple times not to do it, but he would always continue. A couple months into dating, a girl had made a video on Instagram claiming he was a cheater, but he denied to me that he even knew this girl, and I believed him. Ten months of dating went by and a friend sent me a screenshot of him being active on Tinder. I immediately broke up with him after that. A couple months later, I started dating someone new. During this relationship with my new partner, Alex would blow up my phone with messages and calls. I decided to block him. He then started driving past my house every single day. At this point, I had started my first job and he would eventually show up there too. I even moved jobs and he found me there as well. Part 2 Getting Back Together 2021 to 2023 The situation eventually died down. Randomly out of the blue, I get a flower delivery of pink roses. It had Alex's name on the card attached, but nothing written. Being the stupid 17-year-old senior in high school that I was, I actually unblocked him and thanked him. He asked to hang out, and I willingly went to hang out with him soon after we started texting. My 17-year-old self thought it was cool to be dating a hot, well-known older boy, so I eventually fell back into Alex. After a couple times of hanging out, we started dating again. I eventually lost my V-card to Alex and we started regularly sleeping with each other. One day he texted me saying he had a surprise for me and then sent me an iCloud file. I opened the file and it was a video of us having sex. 
I had no idea he recorded us having sex. I couldn't even consent as I was 17 at the time and he was 20. Again, stupid 17-year-old me stayed with him regardless of the red flags. Eventually, our relationship became sexually and physically abusive. One night, he assaulted me while intoxicated and left bruising on my head and abdomen. A couple days after that, I decided enough was enough and broke up with him. Part 3. The Stalking 2023-2024 Immediately following the breakup, he would constantly text and call me. He would beg for me to see him. I kept denying, but he kept going. He would threaten to come into my house in the middle of the night while I was asleep. This happened for a couple months. During this time, I met someone new and we started dating. I was having trouble with my mom and my new partner asked me to move in with him. Somehow Alex found out where me and my new partner were living so he started showing up at our place. We documented everything from our cameras and ended up filing a restraining order against Alex. We got granted a temp order until our hearing. Our hearing day came and the judge extended the temporary order to let things cool down for six months and if he breaks the order the judge will grant a long term order at the next hearing. Within days of extending the temp order, Alex violated it by parking in front of my house on multiple occasions. I called the cops multiple times, but they never even gave him a warning. One day while I was working, I get a call from my local PD that Alex tried purchasing a firearm, which violates our order. They just warned him not to do it again and had to let me know for my safety. Obviously, knowing your crazy ex has tried purchasing a firearm is scary itself. The following days, he would follow me to work and stand in front of my boyfriend's truck in the early hours of the morning. Part 4. Fleeing 2024 He would start tailgating me on my way to work or swerve in front of me in his car. Me and my boyfriend moved somewhere else but in the same city still. Somehow Alex still managed to find us. My boyfriend decided that if the cops weren't going to help us then we would need to leave the state. We ended up packing up everything in the middle of the night and driving a state over where my boyfriend's family lives. I have been here for about two months. Me and my boyfriend found good jobs and plan on leasing our own apartment soon. It's been peaceful for the most part, however. I still hear about what Alex does back home. He still tells everyone that we are together still and even posts pictures of me on Instagram. My story is still ongoing and I left out a lot of details. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. In summer 2019, my partner and I, both in our early 20s, decided to take a road trip to Vancouver, Canada, and then stay at Golden Ears Provincial Park. We liked camping, had spring break, and wanted to do something different and make the most out of our vacation. My partner had never been out of the US and it seemed like a crazy new experience. It was a six-day trip with Airbnbs in each state, and the grand finale was a reserved campsite at Golden Ears, and it was close to the water on Alouette Lake. We packed terribly, had a giant tent, brought a bunch of fruit and veggies to eat healthily, stored them in a cooler that was too small, and brought a cutting board and knife to break up the snacks while driving. We started in California and we switched off driving our bright red Ford Fiesta. We drove through Oregon and Washington and made it to Vancouver. We spent a day or two in each state, drank a little too much and stayed out late. Canada was the best part and Alouette Lake felt like walking in a painting. We walked barefoot on the rocks with our toes in the freezing cold lake. We hiked around, saw a beautiful waterfall where we saw a couple taking pics of each other for an hour. And we started modeling the same poses from far away. Everything was perfect. And the campsite was empty except for the other couple. We went to bed early that night. It was quiet and I woke up to crackling outside the tent. 
My partner was still asleep and snoring. I didn't think much of it because it was pitch black and probably an animal. The crackling continued closer to the tent. I sat up and grabbed my phone. The brightness came on and I turned it off, almost blinding myself with light. In those two seconds, I could make out a person right outside our tent. I froze and sat up. They weren't moving and were close enough to unzip the tent. I started poking my partner because I had no idea what to do. They woke up and I said there is someone outside the tent. Then I hear footsteps, quiet footsteps, walking out of our campsite. My partner starts loudly saying, what? Repeatedly in a sleepy haze. A car or truck is parked right outside our camping area and no one is near our campsite. It starts up and then drives off. They didn't turn their lights on until they turned the corner and we were out of view. So I couldn't make out much, but it looked like a truck. Now I'm shaking and my partner can't put together what's happening. I want to leave, but Golden Ears locks the gate until 6 or 7 a.m. And it's 1 a.m., so we are going to stay here. I make us move to the Ford Fiesta and sleep in the tightly packed car. She falls asleep immediately and thinks I'm paranoid. Could it have been a park ranger? It seemed too weird of behavior for a park ranger. I sit there wide awake for about two hours. The car is locked and I want to sleep but I can't. I'm in the passenger seat. My partner is in the driver's seat asleep and it's 3 a.m. I'm sitting half awake. I hear a car slowly driving up the road, lights off as it rounds the corner. It had to be the same truck and I was scared, but my adrenaline was pumping. It slowly rounds the corner and pulls up directly in front of our campsite, again in the same spot. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I had no weapon but the kitchen knife we brought for the fruit and veggies. So I grab the knife and tried and make myself look angry, crazy, and big. I sit straight up in the passenger seat, holding the kitchen knife. I keep it straight up at eye level and stare deadpan out at this truck in the pitch black just like the father in the American Gothic painting. The truck stops and turns off. A light shines directly into my face coming from inside the truck, and I stare back terrified in my bright red Ford Fiesta, holding my large kitchen knife not blinking. The truck starts up and turns on its lights and they stay on, blinding me, and the truck pulls out and turns around and goes back where it came. My heart is pounding and I wake up my partner and say, We need to get the hell out. We pack by just throwing things into our car and sit there awake until 6am. We drive home and don't stop. We keep rehashing and trying to make sense of the situation. We ultimately decide that we both need some sleep. So one night, me and my friends were playing some hide and seek in our hometown. We were probably like 13 at that time. So I went into a small area that is basically like a shortcut from the main road to the side road. I unfortunately went alone and I didn't even think of what can happen. We were only 13 at that time and we didn't bring phones with us. So if something happened to us, nobody would even know. So the game started and I ran sprinting to the woods area. First 30 seconds were all good. We have a rule that we have to come to the checkpoint where we start and we have to save ourselves from not getting picked to search. After around one minute, I start hearing footsteps. So I say, hello, are you one of my friends? Someone that was there didn't say anything. So I started backing out. Fortunately, the woods area has a main road and two side ones, so I could have run either way. I start backing out, and from out of nowhere, this man just appears from the woods and starts sprinting at me while saying, I'm going to catch you in a creepy and eerie way like a kidnapper. Fortunately, I had been training for football, or soccer depending on where you're at, so I knew I can definitely outrun him or at least make him tired. I sprint all the way through the woods with my only light being the moonlight. 
and after around two minutes he gave up. I continued sprinting and got myself all the way to the checkpoint and told all of my friends what had just happened. Of course, no one believed me, but I didn't care since I knew it was real. To this day, I still don't know who or what had tried to catch me that night, but I know that if I wasn't a runner, the outcome would be very, very different. <laughs>